Hi there, this is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Welcome to today's video. I uh, got an email from Kenneth in Huddersfield in the UK. Uh, thank you, Kenneth. I know Huddersfield well. I lived in Bradford for about a year of my life. Um, and his question is about whether we, we learn to develop a problem with alcohol because our parents give it to us when we're younger. And he's read some research that even giving children small amounts of alcohol can, can condition them to become alcoholics. And he's wondering if that's true. His personal experience of alcohol at a young age was around Holy Communion. It comes from a religious family. And obviously a part of the communion is the taking of the bread and the taking of the wine. And he's wondering if that sort of, you know, that sort of thought process and that, that being an intrinsic part of their family's life added to why he has a problem today. Uh, all I can do, Kenneth, is give you my thoughts on this, really, because I don't have any research to back up what I'm saying. But uh, so I'm just purely giving you my speculation on why I think this is happening. I think it's very difficult to prove uh, that if you give a child some alcohol, he's then going to develop a problem because there will be uh, e probably an equally large number of children who are exposed to alcohol that don't ever develop a problem. Um, so it's probably quite a complex question. If you give a child who has the genetic predisposition to develop a problem with alcohol, alcohol at an early age, perhaps you're accelerating the process because problems with alcohol only ever get worse because it is the nature of the drug. It's like quicksand. Now, if you stick to the quicksand analogy, the earlier you step into the quicksand, the further you're going to sink by a certain point. So the earlier you get started, the more trouble you're going to be in, basically. Because the longer that alcohol is in your life, the worse your relationship with it gets. So I don't really know if giving small children alcohol turns them into alcoholics. Maybe. What I do know for pretty much certain is that social conditioning has a huge impact on why we drink. And we grow up with alcohol in our lives being treated as this magical golden liquid that we're not allowed. Only the grown-ups are allowed. And you, you know yourself, what happens? It's pure psychology, this. If someone says to you, this is amazing, but you can't have it. How much do you want this? More than anything. And this is why diets fail. You know, you go on a diet because you're unhappy about your weight, and suddenly you become the hungriest man or woman alive. Because suddenly food is a scarce resource to you, and you can't get access to it. So that's why diets fail, because you have to constantly fight this psychological urge to avoid something that you desperately want to have. And also as children, you see, before our brains are properly formed and we can process all the information we're receiving in a critical way, for probably the first six or seven years of our life, we just accept as fact everything that our parents say to us. Why would we you know, question it? They're, they're the people who keep us alive. They're, they're God in our eyes. Why would we question what they say? And that's why as children we would believe in Father Christmas and the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny, because we don't have the capacity or even desire to assess the data for any sort of bogus information in there. We take everything as fact. So what we witness when we're growing up is the grown-ups drinking magic liquid that we're not allowed that makes them appear to go very, very happy and silly. This must be an amazing thing. What, what is in that glass that makes Uncle John do a handstand at the age of 65? So we're, we're like, oh, what is this thing? So when we get access to it, it's even as though it tastes disgusting, we almost have to persuade ourselves it doesn't because we've seen all the grown-ups drink it and love it. So we start to doubt ourselves. We start to think, Maybe there's something wrong with me, so I'll, I'll just keep, I'll stick at it, I'll stick at it. It's a learned addiction for that reason. And also because you know, there's, the chances are the first time you get to taste alcohol, it's because you're being treated to it. Something will have happened, you know, it'd be Christmas, Thanksgiving, maybe you're on vacation, maybe your parents want a bit of money, or there'll be something going on where everyone's happy, and someone will say, go on, give him a little bit, it won't do any harm. And they'll treat you to a bit of poison. It's nice of them, isn't it? <laughs> so, you, you know, you can see the social anchor coming in here as well. Good times, everyone's happy, drink alcohol. Good times, everyone's happy, drink alcohol. And your subconscious will link these two together. And what happens is that when something good happens in your life, a little thing fires off in your brain and you go, alcohol. 
It's a subconscious anchor. It's very powerful. Um, there's one, one other thing that I will talk about. Um, I think if you grew up in an alcoholic household, if, if your mother or father was an alcoholic, they will be very conscious that what they're doing is wrong and they'll be very conscious that they're doing it in front of someone that they love and someone they want to positively influence, but they can't because they're a drug addict. And they'll feel very guilty about this. They'll feel a lot of emotional pain that you, their child, can see their fallacy. You can see their weakness. Now, there's two ways to deal with pain like this. There's a positive way and a negative way. Unfortunately, the negative way is a lot easier. The positive way to deal with it is to stop drinking, is to say, I'm sending a really bad message to my child here. I'm going to quit drinking. As much as it hurts me, as much as, how, as, much as I'm going to find it difficult, I'm going to do it for the good of my child. Now, that's the positive way you deal with it. The negative way you deal with that emotional pain is you make the pain go away by whatever means. And that may be that they give you alcohol so that you're drinking with them. They give you a bit of their beer, they pour you a bit of their wine, and now the pain goes away because you can't judge them. You're doing the same thing as them. And this person is no longer on their own, being bad on their own, being a terrible person on their own. They are now in the company of someone else doing the same thing. And I know it's twisted and I know it's insane to give a child alcohol for that reason, but this is pure psychology. This is pure pain management. And when people are so addicted to this drug, they will do anything to make that pain go away. They will do anything to facilitate their continued drinking. So I'm sorry, it's not a really simple answer that is concise and short and it's not a yes or no. I think there are many reasons why what happens in your childhood adds to your problems with alcohol later in life. There is no doubt that if you've been exposed to it in certain situations as a child, it will accelerate your problems in later life. I don't think you can blame it all on your childhood. I think you've got to look at the drug itself. This is not a harmless social pleasantry, despite what the media says, despite what the marketing says. This is a powerfully effective drug that kills two and a half million people every year. You know, you're not weak-willed or a failure because you can't control your drinking. You are drinking a deadly drug that wants to kill you and you've become addicted. It is the natural conclusion to your actions. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. It is the natural conclusion to your actions. And as I say in the book, it's like, you know, if I put itching powder into your underpants and you started scratching uncontrollably, you wouldn't accept the label scratchaholic, would you? You know, if I came up to you and said, what's wrong with you? You're scratching like an idiot. You wouldn't say, yeah, I'm, I'm just a broken person. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible broken person. I'm a scratchaholic. You'd say, I'm scratching because you put itching powder in my pants, you idiot. Same is true of alcohol. You are an alcoholic because you drink an addictive substance repeatedly. It's pure logic. Thank you for watching. I hope that helps, Kenneth. And uh, don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want a free copy of my book, Alcohol Lied to Me, go to the website right now, www.stopdrinkingexpert.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.